Welcome back to the channel, guys. If you're new here, my name is Rick. Normally, my channel is about heating, air conditioning, refrigeration, and generator repairs. And one of the newer things that I've been doing on my channel is reviews on portable power stations because of my background in electricity. So today I'm going to be doing a review on the EcoFlow Delta Pro 3, which is a brand new product just now released by EcoFlow. I just did a review on their EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra, which I'll be doing a second review on that here in July, which is their flagship product. So what EcoFlow has done is taken the Ultra and combined a lot of the awesome features it has into the Delta Pro 3, just in a smaller package. So the Delta Pro 3 offers you 240 volt split phase power, which is huge for someone like me that lives in the country that has a well system that runs on 240 volts. That was a huge improvement for me. I'm also able to run this with my Smart Home Panel 2, which is another product that EcoFlow came out with, which allows you seamless switching back and forth, which allows you to have that true standby generator feel without having to get up and switch back and forth between the panels. What's been done differently on the Delta Pro 3 versus the original Delta Pro is they've made it quieter, they made it more powerful, more charge cycles, they've increased the voltage output, they pretty much just improved everything. So we're gonna go over some of the basic things about it, what makes it special, and then we're gonna do some of the testing on it. As usual, EcoFlow's made the display just as easy as ever to read with your output watts, your input watts, your icons up here in top tell you whether you've got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, whether you're running AC, whether your power's reduced, all the basic things that you come to expect out of the simplistic type of display. That way you don't have to have a book there while you're trying to learn how to use it. So one of the things EcoFlow did with this product here is they increased the capacity up to 4,000 watts of continuous pure sine wave power, which means it's gonna be safe for your most delicate electronics. I'm gonna be using an oscilloscope here in just a little bit and testing this under a load to kind of show what the actual sine wave looks like to prove whether or not it can do what they say. Now EcoFlow has pretty much kept things very similar here on the front. They still have the two 100 watt USB-C charging ports in the front. They have two fast charge ports for USB-A at 18 watts. And then down below here, we have total of four 120 volt, 20 amp circuits. And here at the top, we have a NEMA 6-20R plug, which gives you 230 volts out. And at the very bottom here is the very familiar plug that you see on most any 240 volt generator, the L14-30 plug. So if you have a gas generator and you no longer wanna mess with gasoline and worrying about CO poisoning getting into your house or the noise that it creates or the attention that it brings if you're a prepper, I've got the perfect product here. Like many people, if you live in an apartment complex, you can't have a generator running because you got neighbors right beside you and you may not even have an outside window to be able to even do anything. With the portable power stations like this, you're able to have this power system inside of your house because this system is even UL rated, which is one of the more expensive ratings that most people don't have that proves that it's actually a safe appliance. Now, the type of battery they use in this is the LiPo 4, which is a lithium phosphate battery. That's your longer lasting, more safe battery over the lithium ion and they've increased the charge cycles from 3,500 up to 4,000 charge cycles, which can give you up to a total of 11 years of continuous use. Now, at the end of that 11 years, you're going to have 80% capacity left, so even though you've lost 20% of your capacity, the battery's still good. Now, one of the other many things that EcoFlow's improved is the way they channel their air through the device. They move the fans from the side to the front and channel the air on throughout to the back, which then has reduced the noise signature of the unit down to as little as 30 dB. We're gonna be testing that out with the dB meter here in just a little bit as well. Now they also kept their plugs pretty similar. They made it really nice and convenient here on the side. You have the RV plug here, which is your traditional 30 amp plug at 120 volts. This does have UPS backup. They've also improved their UPS backup system to as little as 10 milliseconds of switchover speed. Here on the other side here on the front, there we have the DC5521 plug on top. Down below that we have our communication or remote cable. And directly at the bottom there we have our 12 volt 30 amp Anderson plug. Now here on the back they've made things very simplistic and very similar to the Delta Pro Ultra. The panels here on the back flip down and push in which makes it very easy to get to everything. You don't have to worry about anything getting snapped off. And this is where you see that they have the availability to hook two expansion batteries, which we're gonna be going over that here in just a little bit. You have the power port here on the side, which is your main power output port here, which you can hook to your smart home panel too or you can also hook it up to a generator plug adapter, which gives you faster charging. And they also have an EV charging adapter, which will allow you to charge it at any of your EV charging stations. On the back here, we have high and low voltage solar panel inputs. So our yellow plug here is our solar input at 30 volts to 150 volts, giving you a total of 15 amps of input. 
And on our black one here, we have 11 to 60 volts, 20 amp input. Then here on the back is the traditional 120 volt plug that you would plug into your wall outlet with selectable fast and slow charging, which you can select in their app. As you can see, they have wheels on the back, which makes it very easy to coast this around when you extend the handle here on the front, push the button, pull it out, and you're able to tilt it back and move the device around. All right, now it's time to talk about expansion. We're able to put the extra battery right here on top. You line it up. It has a pocket that it pretty much falls right into place there. Although this does have a right angle plug, it's not quite as small as what the Ultra is. And I think that's so that they could remotely put the batteries off to the side for flexibility if you had a different type of setup, whether it be in a van, maybe you didn't have enough room, whatever the case. But the plugs are pretty sweet looking. They do have a push button here that releases the mechanism right there on front. It's just as simple as taking it to the plug, pushing it into place. Give it a little tap. Same thing with the other one. It can only go one way there. You can do one loop and it kind of keeps it close together and you can line it into there. Now, if I had two batteries, obviously I would probably put the other one down here. It's not really that bad far as hanging out there. Once that's connected, they communicate together. You tap one, it brings on the other. Now guys, make sure you're signing up here on the EcoFlow website. As you can see, you can sign up. You can save up to $3,000 with the different discounts that they have. They're going to be releasing this here online here in just about an hour. Go to ecoflow.com, sign up here, enter your email, simple as that. They got deals here where you can save $300 on the Smart Panel 2. Absolutely, I feel is the best investment you can get. They have the Smart Generator 4000, which hasn't been released yet, but you can save up to $300 on that. You can get an extra two year warranty, which would take you up to seven years and get an extra $300 off the Smart Battery that goes on top. So sign up guys, now is the time. This is where they're gonna release it at the best price possible. Make sure you sign up. All right, one of the tests that people ask about too is how much power am I losing when it's just sitting there turned on and I'm not even drawing anything? So they kind of call it a static draw test. It lost about 10% to 11% in about 20 hours. I left this on last night by accident. So that tells you right there what you're gonna lose even if you're not pulling anything. All right, so it's completely dead. We had to power it back on so that we could even get it to turn on the front outlet so that we can get a reading of how many kilowatts we got out of this. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Let's step it over. So on this meter on my left, I've got 2.178 kilowatts. And the one on my right here, I got 5.661 kilowatts. You can see that it's coming in right now off the outlet at about 1700 watts right now. When you're low on your battery percentage, like you are right now, it will start off a little slower and then work its way up. So adding those together, we'll have a total of, we'll do the math here in a second, throw it on the screen. We're gonna go ahead and now this test here, I did finish it out with the little motor and the one electric heater. We did th mix it with a resistive load and a inductive load both. So it still was not perfectly balanced like you would have with just a like, resistive heat only but that's what we came up with. All right, now's a good time to talk about the weight of this big bird. Our top battery here, which is IP65 rated, so for you people that like to travel about with your power station, you know that it's IP65 rated, means you've got some protection against the elements. The top battery here weighs 72 pounds. The bottom section here weighs about 114 pounds. As far as the dimensions, I'm gonna do a overlay right now so that you can see that and hit pause on the video. Now, although this thing is heavy, it does have two handles right here on the side. So you could always use two people, one on each side to help split the difference between the weight. And the top battery here is exactly the same thing with the two handles. That way you can sit there and do the buddy system and pick it right up and move it around. Now, if you take a look here on the bottom of the battery, this part right here is actually made out of rubber. Same thing over here, but that's what the bottom of the battery actually looks like. And the bottom of the actual portable power station here has rubber here at the bottom here, two rubber feet here at the top. Your push button piece pops up. This is what I was talking about when you want to grab a hold of the handle and you can extend it to the length you need. Looks like everything in here should be replaceable. So if that does get damaged, it looks like it'd be pretty simple with a couple Phillips heads that you could replace that. Now, if you're tilting it back, I do not see anything back here that's rubber to help protect it. So you definitely want to be a little bit careful. The handle here is what's gonna hit, that is made out of plastic. Now, I don't know if they allow you to do it the way I do it right here, but I'm actually able to move this around with this actual battery on top there. I would not just say, hey, go ahead and just grab a hold of it and let it go. I mean, it's on there, but I would definitely want it strapped. Can't say, you know, this handle was built for this, but this is how I've kind of moved it around very carefully. 
but it does work for that. Now, if you had two batteries on here, I'd be very leery about doing that. Now you have three ways you can hook this up. You can either do it the traditional way that you've been seeing with the outlets that you've seen on the front. You can use a generator inlet box right here on the side, or you can go all in and get the EcoFlow Smart Home Panel 2. This right here is equivalent to what a normal gas home standby generator is, only faster. So this beauty is glass here on the front. It's NEMA 3 rated, meaning it can be mounted outside. All your goodies are right here in the inside. You've got a total of 12 spaces. What I've used here is tandem breakers, but I leveled out my loads. I went into more of the details of how I laid out this panel so that I didn't overload anything and I kept everything within specifications in my Delta Pro Ultra video. Like I said earlier, the Delta Pro Ultra video with the testing is coming up here in July. What we've got here is you've got your main feed, you've got your important circuits here, which I pretty much have put most everything that I needed that's really important. The beauty of this panel here is I can control it from the app remotely anywhere in the world. I can see exactly how much power I've been using, which one's been doing it. I can turn each individual circuit on and off. I can set parameters of when I want something to run, when I want it to drop out. I mean, if you're gonna invest the money into the power station, you're crazy if you don't get the Smart Home Panel 2. This right here sets it off. I've been doing power station reviews for a while now, and I really gotta say I wasn't that impressed just because they didn't have the power to run my whole house, they didn't have 230 volts, and they sure as heck didn't have an automatic transfer switch like this. This will work with the DP3, which is the Delta Pro 3, and it'll also work with the Ultra. Now there's a lot of firmware updates that are coming out. Currently right now, here real soon, they're gonna actually have it so that you can put three DP3s on this smart home panel. And that's how you can combine them together, 4,000, 8,000, 12,000 watts. That's just kind of a little bit of a quick rundown. This bottom section down here is not NEMA 3 rated. This can be mounted somewhere else in the house where it's convenient. As you can tell, I get excited about this box just because this thing sets it off. I don't, I don't know what better way to do it. This thing here just makes it all worth it. Now I have been told that there's things in the works, but we don't know if it's gonna happen or not. But right now it's just hearsay, but possibly being able to add my DP3 and my DPU, so my Delta Pro Ultra and my Delta Pro 3 on the same circuit. Currently that's not available, but I'm hoping they can come out with it so that I can get the capacity out of both of them, combine them together so I can run even more appliances without having to buy extra batteries. Hooking this up to the Smart Home Panel 2 is very simple. You've got your plug right here. Pick any plug you want, doesn't really matter. Just comes to the very back of it. And you plug it in down below here. All right, so now we've got everything plugged in. It's ready to go. All we gotta do is turn on our button right here on the right. We've got a green light, which is gonna go to yellow. It's starting to charge. I've already got it programmed for what rate I want it to charge at. The Smart Panel is ready to go. So we gotta go into the app now and then go ahead and start switching some things around. All right, so we've went in here to the app right now. We're gonna go ahead and look at our, our DP3. You can see everything's right here. If I go to turn on outlets, um, let's say I go ahead and try to turn on the outlet here on the bottom left corner. It will not work because we're plugged into the smart panel. So all your settings are gonna be done right over here in the smart home panel. We go into the smart home panel here, storm guards kicking on. So obviously there must be a storm coming, so it's gonna charge it up to 100%. You can see what kind of power I've been using, and this is over the day. Here is the month. I can see exactly everything that's going on. It's just pretty amazing everything it can do. AC charging power, you can set your wattage of where you want it to charge at, right there and there. Charge limit, 90% is generally where I'm at. So here's the EPS mode right here. So we click on that. Right now, this thing is armed. This allows the system to switch over in 20 milliseconds. So even though the DP3 can do it in 10 milliseconds. It's limited by the speed of the Home Panel 2. 20 milliseconds is generally fast enough for most computers. Now I can go into my circuits here. I can see that the living room's pulling 101 watts. The lights are pulling 99. Basement lights are 249. I can see pretty much everything that's going on, whether it be the well pump, the heat pump, and all that stuff. All right, right now the studio lights are turned off. We're just running off the fluorescence right now. So we can go ahead and open this up and we'll emic the power going out. So the grid actually comes in here on the top left corner. When I flip this grid, and I haven't done any testing of this lately, so it should switch over in 20 milliseconds. So we're gonna go ahead and emic it going out, and it did not work. There we go. All right, for whatever reason, it didn't work. That sometimes happens when it's been setting for a little while. I'm not sure exactly why, but you can come down here and you can see we're pulling about 1600, 1700 watts on the actual DP3. You can see down here, the red light is actually on grid. For whatever reason, it just doesn't always work on the first try. 
So now we're going to go ahead and switch it back to the grid being on. Wait for a second. There, it just switched over. You can actually hear the fan kicking on there. Generally, if you're under 2,000 watts of draw, it's usually fine. Now, here's what it normally does. There, you can see the little click. That is how fast it switches over. That's generally how it goes. I'm not sure why sometimes it does it. Even the DPU does the same thing when it's not been used for a while. I think it's mainly things haven't been synced together. I haven't had this plugged into the smart panel for a while, so that might have something to do with it. But generally, power comes on, it switches rack over, power goes back out, clicked over that fast. So right now we're only pulling 895 watts. I'll go ahead and be quiet. You can see what we're pulling for dBs. This is your SPL meter. So right around 42 dB. That's generally what I get most of the time. Now they say that this can actually power a two and a half to a three ton air conditioner. They say the same thing with the Ultra, which it does do that no problem. Now obviously it depends on what other things are running in addition to it. So we're gonna go ahead and kick on the air conditioner and put it under a heavy load. My air conditioner pulls 2000 watts by itself, plus the current status, we got it right around 800 watts. So we're gonna be pulling 28, possibly 3800 watts. All right, so I have mine set up so the air conditioner would not run. So let's go into the app real quick and change that. Okay, outage under emergency settings. Click on outage strategy, set it up. Currently the way I've got it set up is my furnace and the different devices you see right there are always gonna have must have power. These are the ones that would be nice to have, which is my well until I get down to about 20% and non-priority is the heat pump. So we're gonna go ahead and change that. Let's move it to nice to have, confirm. All right, there goes the heat pump. It just kicked on. My, uh, my air conditioner pulls 34.7 inrush because I have a hard start kit on it, which is basically a starting capacitor that helps get the load going. So right now we are pulling back again at 2,600 watts. Our frequency here is holding right in there at 59 and our voltage is holding right in there at 238. So let's go ahead and load this thing up a little bit more. The outside lights and a few other things are gonna be kicking on, so we can go ahead and run those. All right, right now we're at 2300, so 33, 43. We got about 1500 more we can go. Let's plug in a 1300 watt heater, and see what happens. All right, there you go. 1300 watt heater should have kicked on. So we got an electric heater running right now. We are at 3,400 watts. It ended up shutting down the basement, which is where that heater was plugged in at. So if we go into the app, we'll probably see that it cut that circuit because it was pulling too much. It was above the threshold that I have set. It locked itself out because I can set these for five, uh, 10 amps, 15 amps, 20 amps, 30 amps, whatever I want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and turn back on the utility so that I can get my power back. Because right now when that trips that, it ends up shutting my internet off because this actually powers the router for the internet, uh, so the cable ends up going down. But as you can see, it basically protects itself. So when you overload it, basically it just shuts down a circuit. So if you do overload these circuits here, it's gonna shut them down. So as you can see, it's easy to hook it up when you're not trying to purposely overload it. I've got the actual circuits. I can set them at 15 amps, 10 amps, 20 amps, 30 amps, all the way up to 60. So one thing about this panel is it's done in four quadrants. The first quarter here, has one section, it's total amperage is 60 amps for that one. Same thing for the next one underneath of it, off to the right and off to the right. Obviously you can't just add them all together. That's the whole reason why they want you to have an electrician hook this stuff up because if you don't really understand electricity, they don't want you to misunderstand it and wire it up incorrectly. Plus you need to possibly get permits and things like that. Once again, if you're gonna get the uh, panel here, definitely check out the website. They've got special deals for the people in California and Flor uh, Texas. It doesn't take much to install this thing. Uh, we're talking a little bit of conduit to get it over there, pulling some wire back and forth. You've got some heavy gauge wire there that you need to run from your main breaker to your feed breaker. Not gonna go into a lot of detail on that stuff because that's not what this is about. But that is a brief overview of how that works. We're gonna show you the other way that you can run this system. Now I'm gonna show you the traditional way that you can hook this up to your panel without uh, spending a lot of money. One way is to use a generator inlet box. This gives you a safe way to hook the system up. And then you have to have a interlock switch like I have up here on top. What this switch does is makes me turn the main breaker off before turning on the actual panel here. Very simple, can be installed very easily. You can get those for anywhere around $25 to $75. 
and then whatever labor it takes to install it, which for the most part, it's a couple screws and you mount it. Right now, this breaker right here in the top right corner is the one that's gonna feed the uh, EcoFlow into the panel. Right now, I cannot turn it on, which keeps this dead. What we have here is a 10 gauge cable. We're gonna plug this into the actual panel up here. We plug it in there. And I got me a short one because I don't need a real long one. We're gonna plug this in down here on the face of it, twist lock. Now, one thing I am going to tell you, this will not power a smart panel and this at the same time. It will not power the 240 volt and the 120 volt side at the same time either. So it's one or the other. But if you're gonna run the 230 volt, you can actually make a breakout box that would split it to two legs of 120 volt and you could do it that way. Generally, if you're gonna do it, you're gonna end up running something like this right here, where you're gonna feed it into the panel. So all we gotta do is turn that on. That's on. You can see here that we actually have a green light, which tells me that it's actually powered. Now we come over here. Now the thing that stinks about this is, is we're gonna to have to lose power. Now, assuming that the power's already out, everything's blank, you need to have a flashlight and things like that, which is another reason why I like the smart home panel. So what I've gotta do is turn off my main everything goes dead. Now that that main breaker is turned off, I lift this up, lift it up like that, flip on the power station, and now the house has power. And now you can see that the lights down here are now powered up. When you come down here to the front, you can see that we're pulling about 1800 watts and everything in the house is powered. Now, when you do something like this, you've got to actually get rid of some of the different breakers that it cannot run. So such as maybe the water heater, the, uh, air conditioner, stuff like that. You've got to go through and actually shut those things down. That's one thing that you got to do. This is what I had to do when I had a gas generator is I'd have to go through and shut down my big, big actual appliances like an oven, my barn, you know, the auxiliary heat, water heater, because the water heater itself could just drain this thing down in a heartbeat. That's the cheapest way right there, the safest and cheapest way that you can do it without investing a lot of money into the smart home panel there. Now, the other alternative way is to go grab yourself an extension cord and run a cord all the way over to your furnaces and things like that. So that's why I like to either use this process here or the smart panel. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and switch this back because if we're gonna sit there and short cycle this, I really don't want all of my appliances in the house going on and off and damaging something. So we're gonna go ahead and shut that off. That dropped down, turn my main on, and now I'm back on to the utility. Another nice thing about the panel here when I have it like that is it's all laid out. It can automatically be regulated. As you can see, if I overload it, it's gonna shut down that particular circuit and not shut everything down. They have over 44 different types of protection with their battery management system that protects the battery and the generator by protecting it against over voltage, under voltage, over temperature, under temperature. Heck, on one of my tests, I actually hit the fan and it actually shut the whole system down because the fan stopped. And if the fan's not working, the system's gonna overheat. So it's got protection galore in it. Now we're gonna do an overload test. So we're gonna use a blower here, a sweeper, and two electric heaters, and we should be able to overload it and make it shut down. All right, right now we are running right at about 3,900 watts. We're holding in here at 118, 119 volts. We're right at 60 hertz, and you can see our sine wave is pretty much perfect. Now, obviously we're running pretty loud in here. You can see we're somewhere in the 80 dB range. I'm gonna kill power to the actual outlet here and kill it all, and we're gonna see how loud this thing is running. We're right at 3,900 watts. We're pretty much maxed out. Back down to 44. So when it was hammering it out, you know, it definitely was making a little bit of noise. Not near as loud as what I've heard in some of the other videos of the first generation. Now, previously when we were running that, we were running 118 volts. What the X Boost is gonna do is it's gonna lower the output voltage within reason to an acceptable level. Not everything's gonna like this, so they really recommend using this more on motors and hair dryers and heavy loads like that. So when we turn this on and watch the voltage, we're gonna see it drop, but the frequency should still stay at 60 Hertz. So we're still at 117, almost 118 volts, we're right at 3900. Where you're gonna see it change is when we start to go over. So now we're gonna go ahead and take this one heater up to high, which is going to push it over. We're gonna jump up, 
Now it's going up to the 4,000. Look at the voltage, it's dropping down to 113. So that's what X-Boost does. You can see we're still holding a good sine wave over here. So we're not hurting anything electronically wise, but we're dropping our voltage a little bit. And just to double verify, we're holding right at 59 to 60 hertz there on that. 60 hertz is what the, the US uh, grid is. We're gonna go low. And we're dropping to 104 volts, wattage. What's our wattage doing? Right here at 4,000. Going to high. High wattage, we're going up to, it's holding it right at that 4,000 mark. So it's literally putting the power out. So now we're down to 96 volts. So in theory, we're not going over 4,000 watts because you're lowering the voltage. You gotta remember, voltage and amperage plays hand in hand with each other. So the voltage has gone down to 96. We're still holding clean power here. We're still at 60 hertz. Same thing here, we're at 60 hertz. But I'm running the heat gun. You can hear the fan change speed, but it's able to do it. And we're still not overshooting the system. However, I really would not want my sensitive electronics running at 96 volts. That's why you would really only want to run heaters and heavy inductive loads like that. It's, like I said, a feature that they've included in there to give you just a little bit more ump for it, but it keeps it from going over the 4,000 and causing it to overload. You can see the cords are definitely warm. So coming over here to the unit, you can see we're holding pretty nice there. That right there is a reflection on the glass. Center mark about 80 on that red spot there. You can see where things are kind of just warming up there on the inside. It's automatically adjusting. You come to the back here, you can see the heaters definitely are warm. You've got your max, minimum, and center. Center's at the top, that's that little white dot there in the middle. And you can see where we're at there. Come to the back. Okay, you can see right there, looks like we're maybe 115 to 120 something. That's internally inside where you can't get to. And then for the most part, somewhere around 90 some degrees. So it really depends if you're what you're running. You're running motors, it's not gonna hurt anything. All right, once again, we'll go ahead and shut it off. You can hear it running. I'm leaning into it. Instantly brings it down. Sweet. Well, there you have it, guys. That's the DP3, the Delta Pro 3. Check it out, ecoflow.com. There's discount codes and links down in the description down below. I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch through the video. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you liked, what you didn't like. Let me know what your experiences are with it. I greatly appreciate that. Make sure you check out my release here in July, which is the Delta Pro Ultra. I've already done the first video. I'll put a link to that here in this actual video, but check out the testing where I do pretty much the exact same things I'm doing here and see how well it does. It's rated at 7,200 watts continuous power. It's able to do up to 97, 96,000 watt hours, I believe. I'm kind of have to go out of memory. Everything I say in these videos is not scripted. It is all being done out of memory. So you got to understand sometimes I take forever to make these videos because I have to repeat it until I get it right. So there's a little inside information for you guys. It's definitely a lot of work. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Till next time, make sure you subscribe, click the notification bell later. Oh yeah, forgot one thing. USB A and B and C and D and E, F, G. Didn't do that in the video. Sorry about that. I'm running out of time. I gotta get this thing uploaded. I've already tested it. I was able to charge my MacBook Pro at 100 watts, no problem. That was the only way to do that under the PD charging. And then as far as the 18 watt USB on the other side, no problems on that either. You're buying this to power your house and to do a lot more than just little USB stuff. So EcoFlow, as you can see, doesn't lie about their specs. They actually put out the stuff that they rate and it can do it. So no worries.